Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, praise the Lord Christ. And uh, in this video, we're going to look at our second example on uh, the squeeze theorem. And here, we're going to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial divided by n to the n. And you could do this without using the squeeze theorem, but your line of thinking will, will not depart from what I'm about to show you, which is that like, um, however you think about it, you have to think that like n factorial, right, is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 dot 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 and then all the way to 1 right n minus 3 n minus 4 until you get to 1 okay and uh, what is n to the n n to the n right we'll have as many numbers in a product as n factorial right but they're all n's so n to the n is n times um, n times n times n dot 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 and then all the way to the nth n right okay and uh, this limit has as a quotient n factorial and n to the n so what we should do is like put a division sign here and that amounts to putting a giant division sign right there right but we could just put individual division signs and create n quotients like this right okay all right where to from here well if you look at each of these quotients, like n over n, n minus 1 over n, n minus 2 over n, all the way to 1 over n, the uh, denominator dominates the numerators except for this first one. This quotient is 1, clearly. But on the rest of them, the denominator is bigger than the numerator, right? So that should give you a clue as to what this limit should be. And so if you did it without the squeeze theorem, this is how you have to think. But since here we're using the squeeze theorem, this is uh, what we ought to do, which is... Well, what about if we looked at this, which is, what about if we looked at the quotient n times n times n dot 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 1. So use n minus 1 n's and then this divided by n to the n. So divide each of these by n, right? So here, although you don't see them, as I said, we have n minus 1 n's being multiplied in the numerators and so the only thing that's not an n is this one and then all the denominators are n's well clearly this here has got to be bigger than this here right it's got to be uh, strictly bigger than this here because well obviously n over n is the same in both and 1 over n is the same in both but all of these are ones and all these other guys the n minus 2 guys in between um, are uh, smaller than the n minus 2 guys in between here, right? And so this has got to be bigger than this. But wait, what is this? If we cancel each of these because they're 1's, the only thing that survives is 1 over n. So, in conclusion, what we're saying is that n factorial divided by n to the n is less than, it's less than 1 over n. Right? Based on what I just showed. And of course, n factorial divided by n to the n is bigger than 0. So 0 is less than it, right? 0 is less than, uh, don't like that. Uh, there's some asymmetry. Yeah, 0 is less than n factorial divided by n to the n, which in turn is less than 1 over n. Okay, so we want to use the squeeze theorem. That's why we created a trio of like whatever thingies and an inequality, right? That's what you need when you want to use a squeeze theorem. One guy here, a guy in the middle, and a guy on the right, right? Okay, and so um, anticlimactically then, what we're going to do next is, right, lim is n goes to infinity of 0, which is less than lim is n goes to infinity of um, n factorial over n to the n, which is less than lim as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. Well, clearly this here is 0. So we have 0 is less than, and I don't want to rewrite this, so I'll just use ditto, is less than, what is this limit? 0. So this limit uh, on, either side, on either side has limits that are equal to 0, so it must be equal to 0. So one thing that you should be asking here is, wait, this is strictly less than. It's not less than or equal to. Yes. Um, even for strict, 
strict inequalities, you can apply the squeeze theorem. That's, I guess, the bonus lesson in this example. Yeah? Cool. All right. As I said uh, in an earlier example, the examples past example two are super interesting, and some of them are very challenging. So uh, look forward to those and uh, watch them all. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm done here.